What's up people, in today's video I want to talk about the Microtech SOCOM Elite. Now a little bit of backstory with this one, oh, look at this, it's so gorgeous, a um, little bit of backstory. I grew up in the 90s and uh, I think it was in the early 2000s that I saw the first picture of a Microtech SOCOM Elite and I was, I fell in love with it uh, ever since. So. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit biased when it comes to the SOCOM because it's such an old grail knife for me and um, I will say a couple of bad things in this video about this knife as well uh, but uh, yeah, it's mainly gonna be a positive. It took me a long time to actually buy a SOCOM. It actually took me until 2020. Uh, you can see this was made in September and I think I bought it in October of 2020 so a little bit uh, over three years ago and yeah um, it kind of still feels surreal that I'm owning a SOCOM now uh, why did it take me so long well mainly because first I couldn't exp uh, afford it and then they are not easy to find they are not always available especially the manuals I think the auto versions of these pop up ever once in a while but these manuals are not easy to find always and this yeah it's just sad I think uh, Microtech focuses more on their ultra techs and OTFs in general and the SOCOM gets left behind it's a very old school design in a way that this is how people would design clip points in the 90s and uh, yeah uh, we see a very simplistic overall uh, the lines of this knife are very simplistic overall, but there are tons of features like for instance the thumb studs that lock up as outer stop pins So these lock up here making this knife having absolutely zero side-to-side -side or up and down blade play I've never taken this knife apart never adjusted it in the three years So this is still super solid uh, Yeah, the main reason I'm not taking it apart is because I don't want to mess with the the action because these are not coming apart as it seems ever so I leave it as it is and clean it from the outside as good as I can and uh, yeah so the thumb studs lock up here you have a, a nice swell in the front of the handle and then uh, it tapers down so to accommodate basically the your your hand and how you would grip things you have a lot of room here and not so much room here and this goes in perfectly like so so this knife feels very natural you don't slip forward there's a little bit of texturing going on you also have these rubber inlays here they have always done different kinds of rubber inlays over the generations some of them even have like carbon fiber inlays they also look really good but yeah these work uh, in terms of they give you a little bit more grippiness um, handle, handle is made of Aluminium, I think that's T61, T6 aluminium coated. Uh, for some reason, these handles don't get cold as easily as some of my other aluminum handles. So it's not as big of an issue as you may think it is during winter. I think the most impressive thing right here is the weight because this is like a five ounce knife. So 144 grams, which seems a lot. But actually, if you think about that, this is like a a little bit over four inches in blade length, so like almost ten and a half centimeters in blade length, and the full metal frame and uh, almost five millimeter thick blade. I think it's like four point eight millimeters. Yeah, I think it's not heavy for what it actually is. This is uh, this is actually a lightweight knife for having a, a metal handle and a, as thick of a blade as this one has. So, yeah, pretty cool. Oh, the Microtech Socom is of course also known for its glass break on the end here. I have never tried it out on uh, automobile class, but um, yeah, I've smashed some ice with it because I needed a bucket and it was frozen. And I thought, you know, this worked, so, and it did. And afterwards I I found a piece of glass that I also smashed in. Yeah, it, uh, it also works on thicker glass as well. So yeah, I have no doubts that this would work in a car accident. 
Luckily, I've never tried it out. But yeah, this is a good traveling knife for that reason, because it has a glass breaker. Not a lot of knives have uh, glass breakers. I think the only other folding knife that I have with a glass breaker is my Benjamate Contego, which is a similar size range and overall uh, genre of knife. And this one also has a glass breaker. This one has a thinner blade stock and a thinner grind, though I should mention that. Uh, yeah, I will talk about the grind of the Socom a little bit later, but you can see this very very unique clip point blade, super thick on top. The coating for some reason wears a little bit quicker on the top than on the sides here. So that leads me to believe it might be a different kind of coating. I haven't, I've researched it, but I couldn't found it uh, like super quickly. So I, yeah, I think this might be like a Teflon coating on top and this might be like a several coat, but yeah, both the coating on the, on the sides of the blade and on the frame hold up really well. I have a little bit of wear on my pocket clip, but yeah, I don't mistreat this knife overly a lot, so it doesn't look beat up. I like the combination between the black coating and the, the belt satin on the flats here. Uh, I think it's a really good looking knife. I like traditional knives, I really do. I think they are some of the most beautiful knives, but the these tactical, these black and dangerous looking pocket knives, they always get me as well. I'm a big sucker for that. So yeah, uh, rubberized inlays as I said. Uh, really snappy action. You can hear the sound. This is a super loud knife. This is like firing a loud uh, automatic knife. And this for sure will annoy everybody that lives with you, including your dog. This is not a not a silent knife. This this comes open with a lot of sound. <laughs> I hear people say uh, it sounds like charging a gun, and it almost does. It's very, it's a very loud sound. Even the closing, super loud knife, and uh, kind of a cool sound. I like it. I'll show you the uh, old Socom design. So I bought this one, and a little bit after that, I found on the secondary market, I found this collection piece at this point of the Socom Elite uh, with the old blade shape and this one is from 2002 so this is like a 21 year old knife and uh, yeah they look like this this is the same blade shape so this is the clip point they always only made I think the clip point and the tanto and as you can see a couple of things have changed here on the newer ones you only have that you don't have a swatch you have that secondary grind and that potentially helps with you know turning in between the cuts. So if you cut through cardboard and you turn your cut, there is less binding here, technically speaking. But because it's so thick, it still binds a lot on this on this knife. But on the old ones, you had a really a real swatch. So it runs to here and then it runs down to here. And this, I think, has like a four millimeter blade stock. So you have five millimeters and four millimeters. You can see the difference here. The old one is a lot thinner, a lot slicier for that reason. I think still plenty of toughness with because four millimeters are still a lot of a lot of blade steel, and uh, yeah, the grind runs thinner therefore because it has a thinner blade stock. I really like the old Socom design. I think they just look beautiful. These old clip points, um, the auto versions. They had the mini version which was smaller than that. They looked all so so cool. I, I really. This old Socom design was the one I fell in love with. Uh, sadly, it was not uh, available anymore when I had the chance to buy one. But uh, but yeah, I think even the old Tantos, they looked a lot nicer than the newer Tantos. I think the old Socom design was like the best Socom design in terms of just it looks and also, you know, the blade stock was thinner, so it was a little bit slicier. It had a lot going for it. Um, they have the Socom Delta now which is like the Chinese made SOCOM. Uh, I think it's made by Rook. Is it made by Rook? Maybe. And uh, this one is even more expensive than the newer SOCOM Elite. So yeah, I, I really don't like the Delta, even though uh, I think the black version looks a little bit nicer than the satin version. I think it just doesn't look right. And I would never buy a Chinese SOCOM. That, to me, that's just wrong, you know, to buy a Chinese Microtech SOCOM. That's, I don't know. Especially if I can get it cheaper from America, yeah. 
I'm not doing that. But yeah, the old Socom Elite was the best version. It just had the most gorgeous blade shape from all of them. I think the technology changed to the better. The uh, mechanics on the newer ones are just better than these old ones. You can see that, for instance, they had the screw that goes in the liner lock. They only had one big screw, whereas on the new ones they have two. And they didn't have an insert, so uh, they, they used the soft spring steel against the blade, which in this case they had an inlay. So they have, I think, I'm not sure, but I think they have a softer spring steel on the outside and then a hardened inlay to go against the blade. So yeah, these uh, locks should wear a little bit slower, although I think the Socom was always a knife that wears in rather quickly in comparison to other line of locks, but yeah. Uh, so the technology on the inside, I think it's not as good. Uh, this one sadly cannot be taken apart anymore, but it runs on washers. Um, the blade stentering is still perfect of a 21 years. And uh, the, I think the only downside here is that soft detent. So you, as you can see, this knife falls out of the handle really quickly. So the, there is a detent, but it's really, really soft. And on the new ones, the detent is a little bit better. It's still not perfect though. You can shake this uh, knife out of the handle if you want to. They also had the taper design. It's just a little bit thinner than the newer ones in terms of the thickness. And the pocket clip rides a little bit lower, which I don't like, but uh, yeah, the construction is also more closed, which is better because you don't want to get dirt in the knife. So I think closed construction is actually better than open construction. But that's just me. Some people like it, some people don't. Yeah, beautiful shape on this old one. And the 154cm was good for what this knife is, which brings me right into the negative things about this knife. Well, I already mentioned that the geometry is not perfect for cutting things, so it gets stuck a lot in cardboard. You can do basically all kinds of knife tasks with this, but you can't really do the fine slices. Food cutting is terrible, cardboard slicing is bad. Yeah, this cuts a lot worse than a lot of other knives simply because of its thick geometry. So, yeah. And then the other bad thing about this knife, well, there are several bad things, okay? Let's start with the not so, uh, not so bad ones. Well, this is called the Socom Elite. So it suggests that this would be like a, I don't know, like a first responder military type of pocket knife. Yeah, I see that, but I mean, it, terms of how it looks and everything, but not how it functions. You don't want to have bearings in like a dusty and dirty environment. And especially because this knife is tipped down, which it's not a bad thing in general because you can pull it and open it really quickly that way because you're really close to the thumb studs. But um, because it's tipped down, it's also exposed to dirt getting right into the action, which is not good. So I think that's the first reason. The second reason is that this steel is M390. M390 is not a good steel to sharpen in the field, especially um, if it comes like from Microtech. I have had a lot of knives in M390 over the couple last couple of years, and um, and I must say Microtech really does the worst version of of M390 that that I have ever seen. It's really badly heat treated. I'm not sure if this is just on mine, but I've heard other people say already that Microtech is not really good at uh, heat treating knives and uh, I, I think they don't do it themselves, but whoever does it for them does a bad job. Uh, so this knife came razor sharp with a nice, really nice looking edge. It, it went dull within, I think, two days and it went dull in a weird way. M390 usually is supposed to hold an edge a little bit longer, but within two days I could drag my finger across the cutting edge and not cut myself anymore at all. Even though I've just cut a couple of plastic packages that were not super abrasive on the edge. So uh, I was really surprised about that. Then I resharpened it on diamond stones because I wanted to get, you know, my idea was, okay, this knife has a bad heat treatment. It needs to get the factory edge off and uh, remove some of that uh, burnt steel, maybe it was overheated on a belt grinder, uh, whatever. I resharpened it on diamond stones, put a nice, really nice edge on there. It took me a really, really long time. I think I've never sharpened a knife as long as I have sharpened this knife. This is the worst knife to resharpen. Uh, not because 
you know, it's plate design. It's just the steel just didn't take an edge. And I've made it razor sharp, cut a couple of things, it was dull again. This knife actually was uh, was uh, touched up a couple days ago and it's getting back to dull. I can drag my finger across the cutting edge, it doesn't cut me, so yeah, I don't know. This knife, uh, for some reason, has a really bad heat treatment. So that in combination with the what I explained with the bearings and everything and also because this is not pressed against your pocket, if you run it may open in a pocket. So all these things combined, is this a good soldier's pocket knife? Soko Melite knife? Absolutely not. This is a civilian knife, 100% for sure. But I think it's a really good one. It is thick, you can do a lot of things with it. It has the most terrible steel ever, but overall the knife design is really good. So yeah, I don't know. I really like it. I want to say that. Uh, I really like the Soko Melite despite it's absolutely terrible heat treatment. I mean, I have to emphasize on that, this is just the worst heat treatment I have ever seen on any folding knife, period. Maybe like a Rough Rider is comparable to this in terms of edge retention, but yeah, I don't want to get into that. Uh, size comparisons. Here's a PM2 for you. And actually, I want to do more size comparisons because I want to compare it to some more high-end American-made pocket knives. Uh, where does this sit in the market? Or on the market, I should say. <laughs> Here's the Demco 8020. The 8020 also has like a thick blade as the Socom has. But um, this is a more work knife and the Socom is a more tactical knife. So is the XM18. The XM18 is more of a work knife to me at least. And the Socom is again the more tactical, more stabby stabby kind of knife. And um, yeah, here is a, not a Sebenza, but a Nkosi, which is a more robust Sebenza technically and uh, yeah where does the SOCOM sit with all of these high-end uh, American made knives I think the SOCOM is very unique because while it's I think it's harder use technically it has a really thick uh, spine it's more good for the tactical stuff where the other ones are more good for the EDC or work style environments and it may not have the most robust locking system from all of these, but the liner locks and the SOCOMs, they hold up really well. They don't slip easily. I've done some slight spine whacking on this. Have ne this knife has never slipped. I will say these locks were in a lot quicker than some of the other liner locks that are on the market. Like, let's say, a Spyderco Military or something. But yeah, it is a good, solid locking knife. Uh, it has a lot of rigidity side to side, so it's really strong on the spine because there is no flex because it locks up so solid and it has a lot of stability down the down the point, basically. So it is a good thrusting instrument, I would say. It is a good hard use, get out of any kind of situation that you're in, uh, knife. You have a glass breaker, you can cut most things, even though it doesn't cut super efficiently, but it, you can cut most things. You can pry things, you can stab things. It's the kind of knife that you can can really rely on in a bad situation. Which kind of brings us back to, yeah, is it a good soldier's knife? Maybe. But uh, it has a lot of features that doesn't make it one. So, yeah. Apart from that, it's a really good knife. I love it. Absolutely love it. I have to say that. Even though it has such a bad steel, I really like the Socom. I'm still in love with the Socom design like it's the first day. I still wish they would go to back to the old design at some point because the blades were just nicer on the old ones. And get rid of that M390, that's just terrible. I think it's an outdated steel in general, but Microtech is really the worst at doing M390, which is bad because they have made it their proprietary steel now. Anyways, here's the box by the way. Super cool unboxing experience with this one. I think they have one of the best boxes in terms of high-end knives. Presentation is really good here. Yeah. Overall, Microtech Socom, really recommend it. I think it's less expensive than most expensive knives and it's really good. But just don't expect any slicing or high edge retention output from this knife. It's not good at, you know, a lot of things that other knives are. <laughs> but it's still really cool. Yeah, so that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Maybe we see each other in another video. Goodbye, people.